All right, so I said, hey, we can get an electron to flow from a solution in a solution to a metal and so forth and so on and whatever. We call it a voltaic cell. So naturally, we have A, we can get the electron to transfer to B. We can do that. All a voltaic cell does is it puts in something that makes it do work right here. You okay with that? Okay. All right, so here's a cute example of the exact same idea that people are familiar with. So you take the natural elevation of water in a river, and water naturally flows downhill, right? So you can have the water just fall over that and do no work, or you can put this like wheel, these are the old like sawmills and stuff like that. You put that water wheel in and it, makes it spin and you can get work out of this spinning. The question I have for you is, is the water different for either way? If there is the wheel or there isn't? No. So really the electron couldn't care less how it goes from A to B, just like the water. It just cares that it's here and then it's here. It doesn't worry about the work it does. So like when kids charge their phones in here, sometimes I say, you're stealing my electrons, just to be funny. But technically, the electrons never went anywhere. We use the electrical potential to do work. And plugging your phone in is, in is when you put a pump right here, and you just pump the water back up that way so it can naturally fall again. So naturally, A, the electron transfers to B. That produces like 1.25 volts, okay? And your phone runs off of that. But then you take your little charging adapter, you plug it into the wall, and now you have 120 volts, which they actually step down a ton because it would blow your phone up. So they have these things, resistors in here, and transistors. Anyway, what it does is it pushes the electron back the other direction. We use this electrical potential to force the electron to go back the other direction. Yeah, and that's why, like, when you buy specifically Apple, because we know that they're crooked, even though I own Apple stuff, they tell you never to charge your phone with a non-Apple one. Because if these are not built right, they can fry your phone super fast. And a lot of those fires, they were Apple, um, they were they were Samsung. A lot of those they proved they were using an adapter that was not approved to charge at the fast rate or speed charge, whatever they call them. And so they were using chargers that weren't prepared to do what this needed and it produced so much heat that then the phone exploded. Okay? But 99.9% .9 of these are going to be fine. Yeah. And it's more like, so when you plug it in, it's actually not even like a pump that pumps it back up. It's like your the wall is just lifting the river up now, so it's higher. And so now the water flows that way. So it's, it's weird. It just reverses where the high and the low are when you plug it in. When I was a kid, it was almost impossible. Like nothing would work while you recharged it. And that was annoying. You guys don't even like, that's not even a thing for you anymore. But when it died, you had to plug it in for four hours and you couldn't use it. Um, that's one of the cool feats of engineering lately is that the phone will be way regardless of the direction the electrons are going. So anyway, these are simple voltaic cells. All right, so here is how one works very simply. So we have zinc and we have copper. Hold on, I think it's, oh, oh. Okay, let's just do this. This will talk it through more thoroughly. So a typical cell looks like this. You need to be able to draw and label one of these. I, there we go, I have it right here. So this is a picture you have to be able to draw. You don't have to have like the metals and the solutions memorized but you need to be able to draw these things. So will you take a minute and draw that picture? Oh, 
Okay. So the things that you're going to need to know are the anode and the cathode. And you need to know that reduction happens at the cathode. And so that's what was on that previous slide. That you're like, why does it say red cat? If you can just remember red cat, that means reduction happens. Okay with that? All right. And then oxidation happens at the anode. Now, oxidation means that the electrons being lost. So what this also means, and you for sure you have to be able to do this, you have to know which direction the electron will flow. And it flows from the anode to the cathode. Okay? Now, that should hopefully make sense if you remember what oxidation means. Oxidation means you lost an electron. Reduction means you gained it. So the electron has to go from the loser, which in this case is zinc, to the winner, which this time is copper. Are you okay with this? All right. This thing right here, it is important to know what it's called and what its purpose is. This thing right here is called the salt bridge. And it serves an extremely important role in this whole process. All right. Electrons repel each other, right? Okay, so don't draw this part right here. If one electron came this way, this whole part now would be more negative. Are we okay with that? And this part would become more positive. Even if one electron goes over there, is a second one going to go hang out over here? No. In fact, it would rather stay where it is positive. You okay with that idea? So in order to keep the electron flowing, we have a salt bridge. And what happens to in the salt bridge is ions that are negatively charged flow through the salt bridge towards the anode, which they will want to do that because this side becomes positive. All right, the positive cation goes towards the cathode, all right, because this is becoming increasingly more negative. So it balances each other's, I can't talk, it balances each other out by the negative, so the anion flowing towards the anode, and the cation going towards the cathode. Are you okay with that? So the salt bridge provides a way that the charges can remain neutral at the anode and the cathode. Now, that one's not very hard because this one makes sense with the words. Cations go towards the cathode. Anions go towards the anode. Okay, so those are the things that you really need to be able to label. So on your exam, you just draw two beakers, essentially. You just put whatever you want to call this, like your salt bridge, that's ugly. And then you have your metal. And you have your metal. And you would need to know this is your anode. Now, it's not always on the left, by the way. That has nothing to do with it. This is the cathode. And my slate is definitely not communicating very well. It's been good, Benson, but it's over. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Look at that cute cat. My signature looks a little bit better than that. What the? Who's missing? Where'd Ingrid go? Yeah, all right. Let me try this over again. We'll restart. Oh, well, I can, go. I can do that. That was a good beaker. Okay, salt bridge. <laughs> it's a grand piano. You got to put the part up, though. So. Um, all right, and then you got your metal. You with me? And so this would be zinc, this would be copper. We'll learn like how you know which is which. That's your circuit. That implies something is being done. Okay? 
you would need to label that electrons are moving this direction. You would need to know your cations. You need to know cathode. That's still as ugly as it was before. You know your anions go that way. You need to know this is an anode. You need to know that oxidation happens here and reduction happens here. That's the extent that you would be held accountable for. And this is just something you should memorize. You will have to draw on my little exam I'm going to give you in a few days. And like there's probably a 50% or more chance you'll have to, to draw one of these on your AP test. Which is good. Like this is not one that's super hard. Are we okay with that? Well, it depends. They can put this in a long one or a short one. It would just be like a letter in a long string. Go ahead. Yeah. I said it so pretty last time. I'm worried I won't say it that good again. But the salt bridge is there to make sure the charges stay neutral at the anode and cathode. Does that sound right? Anyone that wrote it before? In junior high, two of my sisters learned how to write shorthand. And they were the best note takers ever. Shorthand's not even a thing anymore. You probably never even heard of it, but it's a language that you can take notes at almost the speed that someone talks. It has its like own symbols for like words that repeat like a lot. I don't know. It's weird. And then I had a sister that learned how to do court reporting typing. You ever seen that stuff? That is jacked up. Is that what it's called? Yeah, sorry. A stenographer or a stenographer? All right. So the zinc's mass will decrease as it turns into the zinc 2 plus ion. And the copper's mass will actually increase um, because the copper is starting to stick to it. Okay? The the Cu plus 2 becomes Cu solid. Okay, as the electrons reach the cathode, cations in the cathode are attracted to the now negative cathode. The electrons are taken by the cation and the neutral metal is deposited on the cathode. Okay. This is something most of you probably can't even find your AP texts. You should read these and practice drawing them on your own. This is a very often tested section. All right, so we kind of already talked about this, but this would be the reason why the electron would flow. It's called the EMF, or electromotive force. So think about water. It only spontaneously flows one way, like in a waterfall. Likewise, electrons only spontaneously flow one way in a redox reaction. I underline this because we can reverse the spontaneity and that's how we recharge a battery. We just have to put the energy in. All right, they go from higher to lower potential energy. So like I said before, water will flow over and it will land down here. That happens naturally. But like when we go to recharge our phones, we just use electricity and this whole thing. Uh, that doesn't work, but whatever. The whole thing switches and now it flows the other direction. Okay. Now, the potential difference between the anode and the cathode in a cell is called the electromotive force. This is an important concept. It is also called the cell potential and is designated E cell. So it will most often be called cell potential and it will be in its its lower its subscript cell. Okay. So once again, just a waterfall is the easiest way to explain this. The energy that the water can gain depends on how far you fall. Are you okay with that? So like, let's say you could jump off this waterfall and be fine. But if you jumped off this waterfall, life would be a little bit different, right? So we would say this has a greater... Um, energy potential up here than it does here. So we will have the same thing in cell potentials. We will find two metals and we'll look in the book to find these values. And the closer they are, 
the less energy they're going to produce, the farther apart they are, the more energy or voltage or electromotive force they can produce. Okay? Now, one thing you really need to know is the, the change in energy. Stick with me here. The change in energy of the water from here to here has nothing to do with how wide the river is. It could be, you know, a six inch little ditch and it could flow over and the change in energy would be the same as if it was Niagara Falls. And it's because we're simply looking at where we were to where we are. We're not talking about how much water flowed over it. We're just comparing the difference. Okay? That's an important idea as we go through this. It depends on the difference, not the width, so to say. Okay. Cell potential is measured in volts. And when I start putting a unit on the screen, your red flag should go up that we're about to do what? Math. Yes. All right. One volt is equal to a joule per coulomb. And a joule is a measurement of energy, and a coulomb is a unit of charge. We don't use this stuff very often, because this is mostly physics. But we have a couple little things in chemistry we're going to do. C-O-U-L-O-M-B. That look right? Coulomb? It's some, I'm pretty sure that's right. All right. Now, you don't necessarily have to understand every single part about electricity, because this is not, once again, a physics class. This is chemistry. But you need to know how to do these. OK. Now, don't stress. That's just blown up to be easier to see. We'll make this small. All right. Standard reduction potentials. If you're ever required to do a problem with these, this will be given to you. Okay? And on the AP test, there's two pages of these. Okay? And you'll only, if you even use them, you'll only use two of them. All right, but whatever, here we go. Reduction potentials for many electrodes have been measured and tabulated. So what that means is someone's already done the calculations when fluorine gas becomes the fluoride ion. Okay, like that's, it's not something we need to do. We just need to know it's a positive 2.87. And we come down here, and lithium is a negative 3.05. Okay? Like, we just, here we go. Now, we define this by what happens with hydrogen. We call that the zero. It's like Fahrenheit. 32 degrees is when water freezes. Like that's their, their standard for whatever. But we choose hydrogen as our standard. Okay. Now, the way we use these is we calculate these things. The cell potential at standard conditions can be found through this equation. Because, just time out real fast. We come all the way back to this picture. It involved two different metals. We can't have an oxidation and reduction reaction if we don't have two things. So our chart, we have to find the two things we're using and compare them through this equation. So the cell potential at standard conditions can be found through this. So the electrical potential or the electromotive force of the cell is equal to the cell potential um, at the cathode and the cell potential at the anode, and you just find these values. Because cell potential is based on the potential energy per unit of charge, it is an intensive property. Oh my, chapter two again? What does intensive property mean? It's independent, okay? So that's why I said we don't care about the width of the river, we're just gonna care about how far the water fell. Okay with that? All right. So we got an example up here. So this picture we've been drawing 
for the oxidation of this cell, the reduction is equal to negative 0.76 volts. Where would I find that value? On this big chart right here. Okay. I would come down and it is... So oxidation, that's happening to zinc. So we would find zinc if it's on here. And there it is, 0.76. You okay with that? And then the other one was copper. So we find that and it's 0.34. Okay? And one was negative and one was positive. We good so far? All right. So we would find those two values and then we plug them in. So the total of the cell would be equal to, that looks like a negative, hold on. Um, the reduction minus the, sorry, the cathode minus the anode. And you just take the values straight from the table. Don't change any charges. And just plug them all in. The only tricky part, like at all, is to realize in case, because it doesn't always just say cathode and anode, you have to find out which one is being reduced and which one's being oxidized, and you just have to make sure that you put them in in the right order. Fair enough? What's that, Isaac? What'd you say? Red cat and an ox. There you go. Um, okay. So let's let's pretend, and I'm making these up. I don't have this memorized. I'm not going to draw everything, but let's just say we have a chunk of lead. Okay, and we have a chunk of Ag. Okay, and we have our voltaic cell. Everything good? What's wrong, Island? Okay. Okay, so let's just say for right now that this one will keep with it. We'll just say this is oxidized and this is reduced. And let's calculate this. You don't need anything else besides that. Okay, well, you need the table. So draw it so you can look at the table. You don't have to draw it, but know it's PB and AG. Put those, and I'll go back to the table, and hopefully they're even on it. And so far, AG is, PB is not, right? So let's just replace PB with FE. Okay? Sorry. the one I'm pointing at. Okay, you have those values. Not necessarily. You don't have to. That, which is fine, it's just a small number. Okay. 